This is breaking news. Good afternoon, Doug Williams here with breaking news. We're following out of lower Manhattan where a fire broke out a short time ago just outside of the courtroom where former President Donald Trump faces criminal trial. Sources tell CBS 2 the fire was sparked by a man who intentionally set himself on fire. Smoke and flames could be seen at the area near Collect Pond Park. All of this happening uh, right near where jury selection had just wrapped up in Trump's alleged hush money payment trial. The latest at this hour, sources tell CBS 2 that a group uh, of people was walking through the area, uh, through the park. One individual stayed behind, poured an unknown liquid on himself. And we don't know uh, yet know exact details on his condition. Quite a busy area, obviously, especially right now with the court case going on. The media and police as well as the Secret Service have been there. CBS 2's Alice Gaynor has been following the trial for us from inside the courthouse, obviously. And Alice, uh, tell me about how you uh, realized what was happening outside. Were you on your way out? What was your status when you heard the news? So, Doug, I got to tell you, normally at this time, we would already be on the lunch break, but we went late today because they were still selecting those alternate jurors, which they did, by the way. They selected six. We were unaware anything was going on upstairs on the 15th floor. The proceeding was not affected by this. The former president was not affected by this. We broke for lunch late, expected to be back inside at 315 for a Sandoval hearing. Someone turned to me who was sitting in front and said, did you hear about what happened? Someone set themselves on fire outside. I said, no, I hadn't heard that. I went to a restroom on the 13th floor, looked outside the window, saw the presence out here. I came outside, and as soon as I walked outside of the courthouse here, Manhattan Criminal Court at 100 Center Street, you could just smell the burning smell. It was a little bit overwhelming at first. I looked at the park, which they do currently have closed off here. There are tons of multicolored flyers strewn about. I, I think you could tell the wind is blowing. So the flyers started blowing around. I tried to look at one. I don't want to talk about too much of what was on that flyer because I'm not sure what it all means and I don't want to promote anything necessarily. But it was talking about um, Occupy returns. Uh, again, multicolored flyers were on the ground. We do have a little bit more information to tell you about. Police sources are saying that this was a homeless man who intentionally set himself on fire. We're told he used a gas can to douse himself. Again, this is according to sources. A plainclothes officer, we're told, tried to pat out the flames, and the fire department used a fire extinguisher. This man was taken to the hospital in critical condition. They are going to have a news conference here around the scene of about at about 3 o'clock. He was taken to Wild Cornell to the burn unit over there. There are a couple of people out here who witnessed it. I know that our crews have been talking to them. But again, I was inside for jury selection which they did finish. We did get a late lunch break today. Otherwise, around this time, that's when we would have been out here. Unclear if this man knew that, but as you can see behind me, there are tons of news crews here for this uh, criminal trial that is now underway. So a lot of witnesses. And I have to mention, you know, we're here a lot at this courthouse and this park. What you have to understand about this park is it attracts a lot of people. And there have been incidents here with emotionally disturbed people in the park here before. It's often a concern of ours when we're going live that there are sometimes people here shouting, causing a scene. And so, again, what we're hearing from police sources and sources who tell Marsha Kramer that this was a homeless man who intentionally set himself on fire. At this time, we don't know why he did this. Again, there are lots of flyers out here. When I walked outside, you could smell that burning smell, and some of his items were on the ground still smoking. I believe we have some video. I'm not sure if you're looking at it right now. But again, a news conference is scheduled for around 3 o'clock, so we're going to have much more information about that. As for the courthouse being affected, so far, uh, to my knowledge, nothing has changed. The proceeding went on as usual. That hearing, that Sandoval hearing, is supposed to get underway at 3.15, so nothing has changed as far as that is concerned, Doug. Yeah, and Alice, I know you don't have a monitor there in front of you, and just to you and our viewers, uh, we are going through uh, video. Obviously, this entire subject matter and what just happened, what we're reporting on is troubling, and uh, to say the least, uh, the video of it as well is something we are going to try and avoid showing you uh, folks at home. Um, these are uh, very disturbing images, and we want to... Uh, keep that away from uh, our viewers as long as we can. And again, we're going through the video that we have. We're going through the information we have. Alice mentioned flyers. There are uh, things circulating on the web about who this man may have been uh, and what he may what may have inspired him to do this. And once again, once we have these things 
confirmed by CBS News, we will tell you. Um, Alice, I, I, having been there just a few hours ago while you were in the courthouse, obviously it is uh, by nature a busy area. The uh, media that are there right now is exponentially more than in any given day because a former president is sitting uh, in a criminal trial uh, courtroom. Uh, but since this happened, uh, this man uh, lights himself on fire. Did crowds gather? What was the scene like after what happened? Sure. And again, police have the park now closed off. Closed off. Normally I can walk through to get to where I need to be, but now they've got barricades set up and more and more onlookers have gathered to see what's going on. You know, they had already selected the main 12 jurors for this case. So today was really about selecting the remaining five alternates of the six that they needed. So it felt like perhaps some reporters and journalists didn't necessarily return today. So the crowd for media, though still large, was not as large as it had been previously during this week. But right now it seems like a lot more journalists have showed up to find out what happened. Why did this happen? Is it in connection with the criminal trial that's taking place here? I don't know if you can see uh, police are over here right now. They want us to move across the street. So, Doug, I'm going to send it back to yep. you. We want to comply. They're going to move us. Right yes, now. Uh, Alice, we appreciate it. CBS 2's Alice Gaynor has been uh, inside the criminal courthouse covering uh, the four days thus far of Donald Trump's criminal trial. Uh, the jury had just uh, been set in the trial, as Alice did mention, um, at the timing of this event, which once again, just to update our viewers out there, we're breaking in with the breaking news uh, that a man outside the criminal courthouse where Donald Trump uh, has been inside this week, uh, uh, under uh, going through this criminal trial and the process of choosing a jury, uh, a man lit himself on fire. We're still learning a lot more information. We have heard from sources into CBS2 that this was a group of people walking through the area. Uh, the group uh, kept going. One man stayed behind, poured himself, poured uh, uh, an unknown liquid onto himself and lit himself on fire. His condition at this hour is unknown. He was uh, sent to the hospital.